John, welcome. I understand you're from London? I am, yes. Um, you're descended from some of the Dales families, as uh, Margaret and uh, Michael, um, and you're sharing in your research with Ben Beck. Absolutely. Indeed. So, mm -hmm. um, and we love very fine other people's work. Oh, he's told you that, hasn't he? <laughs> he's told you that, yeah. Um, well, indeed, actually, I do. Quite often he's doing, so... Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Anyway, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, yes, yeah, so just a little bit about me. Um, I started digging, when I was a child, my father had mentioned his Quaker family roots. <coughs> it was a bit boring to me then, as a child. You don't really pay much attention. Yeah, they came from Keithley, yeah, the Bins family going back all this way, and okay, yeah, whatever, Dad. Um, <laughs> and, but then something happened. When I was um, 19, on the other side of the family, when my, when my great aunt died, um, I came across this box of hers, and it belonged to her mother. And you were opening up this box, and inside were all letters, and probably you've all had these little things when you found something like that, letters or documents. Um, and I was going through my great-grandmother's box reading all about, and I just got hooked on, on it from that moment on. So I'm 37 now. I was 19 when I started. Um, and so it's nearly already been 20 years of my life. So it's kind of strange, really. Um, I do feel a bit of a fraud slightly because um, even though I've been researching my family for such a long time, um, the Quakers is really, really new to me. Um, and the reason why I started looking at this side of the family is because my dad was 80 last year. And I thought it would be quite nice to put everything together for him. And one of the things I, I knew was on the internet was Ben Beck's website. I do wish he was here today. because We've had so many emails together over the last few months. Um, and, and, I, and I've never been someone who just would take someone else's research. So... I decided to make sure everything was right. <laughs> and this is what started the process. And I would send Ben an email saying, you know, just fancy this on your website. You know, it's a shot, it's why is that? And he'd go into his records and we'd have this um, relay backwards and forwards. And one thing that I will say again at the end, but I will say again at the beginning, is it is so important to re-verify everything. As we know, certainly in 20 years, the, the research that, I, that is available to us now is so different to what it was 20 years ago. And we were having a little chat earlier about how, God, when you had to go somewhere and had to pull all those big heavy folders off if you're looking at birth, deaths and marriages, you don't need to do that now. And the census records, there were no indexes, and you're having to go through everything. It was ah, just crazy. I'd be interested to know, though, just out of curiosity, um, how long people have been researching their family for, just so I know. Um, could you put your hand up if you've been researching your family for less than five years? Anyone less than five years? No? Less than 10 years? Someone over here? Less than 15 years? Just you? So has everybody else been researching for more than 15 years, generally? Yeah. So it's just really interesting to just kind of um, see. So for all of you guys who've, done, who've been doing it for longer, there are so many more things available on the internet. I'm going to talk about some of these things. Probably you know. I'm just sharing, really, what I've found out. Um, and I'm going to ask sort of people to chip in, because there are things already I don't know um, that we'll, I'll ask you, maybe, as we go on. OK, so this is what I'm talking about, just some families. Um, we know that the Quaker records are really, really detailed. They've got lots of information on. Sometimes parentage isn't there, which can prove pro problematic. Um, and also, as we're going to look just about settle, um, the, the, the birth, um, marriage and death registers don't survive at all before about, I think, 15, 17, 25. So we have to piece things other, in other places for this particular area. So um, I'm just going, I hope it's that one, is it? Oh, yeah, OK. So this is basically my granddad, okay? Um, I'm just showing him because um, he gave me um, two interesting sides of the family. Huguenots, and I've just taken the Quaker symbol from, from the Quaker website, from the Quakers. So from, from his side, there were the two interesting sides in my family. We were talking about the Huguenots as well. Um, and I've got a real interest in, in a particularly now, in people who, because of what they believed, were willing to, to, to go through quite hardships, and I do find that really interesting, um, particularly for me. Um, so we've got most of my, just to 
So yeah, I'm not going to bore you too much with pictures. Obviously, my granddad here, uh, William Binns here, um, his father, Fred Binns, and then his grandfather, Frederick Binns here. Mm. Um, so my last proper Quaker ancestor here was Fred Frederick, this one mm. here. Mm. Uh, but he married out and ran off to Scotland mm. um, to get married, yeah. um, disappeared off. Um, can't find the marriage. I assume they really did get married, but I've never been able to find it. So you never know. There could be a bit of a legitimacy going on there. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but don't know. Um, but but there was still a, a big Quaker link, um, and his daughter actually married in again. So married into a Quaker family um, in Sibford, and we were just talking about the Sibford link um, there because. Um, my um, grandfather's sister, um, Aunt M, my great aunt M, in the Second World War she was bombed out of London, didn't have anywhere to live, um, and so even though the Quaker link going so far back, she, uh, my granddad's sister went to go and live with the Lambs in Sidford in one of their cottages who were a Quaker family, and they stayed, they stayed there. Um, so it was funny how it all tied back in together. Mm -hmm. And we were just talking, when I was a child in the early 80s, um, I went to the farm in Sidford, run by the, the, uh, Judy and the Lambs, who we were talking about, who you know as, who, who you met as well. And so for me, there's still that link, even though it's quite a long time, it's still sort of gone through the, the family, the Quaker link, which I find quite interesting. Um, okay, so, um, also, Frederick, here, he wrote, which some people obviously here know, he wrote his life story, which is interesting because he talks about his father George and what a strict man he was. Very, very strict father, wasn't really loved by him very much. Um, and that was interesting. But something that probably some of you may have seen, um, so Frederick's father George, um, I just put up here, um, we'll go back, but on, uh, there are now the wills are all online for Durham. I don't know if anyone's been looking at the Durham wills online. Has anyone ever actually seen any of those? Because if anyone's got family connected to there, they're all online and you can search all of them, which is really, really interesting. And I will come back to that. So George's will, he might not have been liked by his son very much, but it's a very long, detailed will, trying to look after all the children, but the Durham wills look and see what's available because it's fascinating what you can find. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked about Ben Beck and his website which is here, the link. Um, fascinating um, mm -hmm. website, so much information, so many sources. Uh, it, it's really, really interesting to see uh, with all of this stuff there. And as I said, when I was, everything that I've found he's put on his website now because he's like been changing and updating it. We've had a really nice communication. Um, and so definitely, I would say, don't check what people do. Don't be afraid if you think something's wrong to ask them, because we've unearthed a lot more because of it. Um, all right, this is a little example here of like one of our little emails, me and Ben, because we said I've never met him in my life, but we send all these little emails, and I said, no, we'll reply to the references tomorrow, but I've just seen that the will of George Binns is now online. You know, it's, it's like the lottery for us. <laughs> it's like wow, you know, it's a will's online. Let's find it, you know. Um, so, yeah, things from Family Search and, and for the Durham Wells. So, he did that, transcribed it. Really, really good. So, look at those resources. Um, anyway, um, okay. Um, another little thing that I'm going to talk about, one of the families that I'm going to talk about is, um, is the Coates family and the Shaw family of Cockfield. Um, and I don't know here, but this is just this little man here. Um, he, this is a little internet site called Roots Chat. Does anyone use Roots Chat mm. very much? Mm. Do, do, Put your hand up. Does anyone, does anyone use Roots Chat? Or not at all? A little. Does nobody else use Roots Chat? Okay. No, but Ben suggested that I did recently, it's, so it's probably... It probably is. Fantastic website if you're researching things. Okay, Roots Chat. Um, what it is, is there's all different places for all the different um, parts of the UK, different categories. You can choose your county. And one of the little sections, if you've got problem where you've come to a brick wall, you can say, you know, well, can anyone help me with this? Mm -hmm. And you can post up all the, the families you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, some people have access to parish registers that you don't have, so you can look at those as well. And I basically just put a post onto Roots Chat, 
um, under here, um, asking about for this is obviously for for Durham, for, for Cockfield. And I said, anyone got has anyone got the um, the parish registers for Cockfield? They are on family search, um, but you don't get all the information, you don't get all the details. Um, and this guy here, um, he's just a user with playing his guitar. He went through them all. He sent me all this on the on, on the forum. So he sent me all these for Cockfield for the Shaw and the Coates family, and all of these as well. So it's amazing. I've got so much out of that website. Mm -hmm. Use it. And you can see here, he sent me all of the information for the families. This has got the places on. Family search doesn't. So I was able to get lots of information from that on these families I was looking at. So the Coates family is one of them. I'm going to jump around a bit because obviously it's not your ancestry. I'm not going to go too much into like where it fits in for me into all together because that won't be so interesting for you guys. Um, but one of the um, families I'm looking at is about the Coates family, George Coates. Uh, and the Coates are quite a, spread out, there are lots of them um, in Quaker history in the area. And a long, long time ago, I think in the early 20th century, maybe 1906, I'm not sure on the date, somebody um, called, I think it's Henry Green, I think it's Henry Green. Um, J.J. Green. J.J. Green, thank you. He wrote a big history about the family. Um, and he was obviously using the resources that he had at the time. And one thing that, that that did do is that the information he had available at the time is now not correct. So it's out of date. And you've got to go back and find out what really is true. So this is just his information here um, about what he put in his book about this George Coates um, here. Um, George Coates, query high road, did he come from here? Um, he's got all these trying to fit in Christopher here. Um, all these children, were they, were they not? It's all a bit strange. Um, and that was one of the things I still wanted to look at, to see. Is it, are these people who we think they are or not? Um, and one thing that I did start doing is um, lots of the Durham Wills are available online. This one isn't, though. It's listed on there, so I, did, um, I ordered it. I thought it was going to be quite expensive, actually. I ordered two Wills, and it was something like... Um, is it six pounds or seven pounds? Has anybody used the digitisation service from any archives? Have you ever done that where they have to take the pictures? Has anyone ever used those services? Mm -hmm. no. I've, you I've had the one from Borthwick, yeah. but I, I don't know what they have to digitise or they'd already done it. Yeah, Borthwick's funny because they send it as, a, as an email attachment now, whereas these are sent as photocopies. It's interesting oh, what they do. Yeah, send me a CD. Yeah, send me a CD. It's interesting. Um, but you can order them, so it's not that expensive. And using all these things, I was able to track down who was who, and I'll come back to that one in a minute. Now, one of the things that I wanted to know about was George Coates, who married Eliz Elizabeth Shaw. Uh, the marriage is really, really basic, maybe six, it doesn't tell us anything really, it doesn't help. And um, I wanted to find out who they were. They became Quakers shortly after their marriage, because their first child, their birth was recorded at the meeting there. Um, and he says here, George Coates, Married at Cockfield Parish Church on the 6th of May 1674, Elizabeth Shaw, presumably the daughter of Thomas Shaw of Hinden, near Woodland, and sister of Anne Shaw. That's one of the things that's, if you look in the family trees on Ancestry or anyone else, this has become a fact. Now, all because of Green. Um, and he had to use the information he had at the time, but something never actually really sat well with me with it, for some reason I'll talk later. And when I got the will, which is now available online, um, it doesn't name that daughter. So clearly something was wrong, and this was one of the biggest things about who on earth was Elizabeth Shaw. I wanted to know. Um, it was interesting. And the reason why I was interested particularly by the Shaws, um, going back here, is there is a Ralph Shaw of Barnard Castle, was a Quaker in the 1750s, which is quite early, um, obviously. And, and I wondered if this was a relative of hers, and this is how it came to be. So I was really interested to see if I could tie in. And looking through all the Shaw family, um, this would name Ralph. It's Ralph, 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 Ralph. I've not got the link definitely to him yet. I'm still cracking on it. But I think that might be um, the reason there. Um, okay. So when we go back to who on earth was this Elizabeth Shaw, one of the things I'm a bit like a dog with a bone. So... I, I, I will drive myself crazy, but I really want to find out um, what's going on with them. So what I decided to do, couldn't find out who she was, there's no baptisms, didn't know. So I started looking through every single will for Cockfield that's online at uh, Durham. 
Um, there's loads of them. I said, I'm going to go through every single one. Um, and then, what I came across was this. Using this, the will of Nicholas Bocciabee, um, a yeoman, 1661. And I was like, oh, one of the witnesses 